Simon, we couldn't possibly have got to one o'clock and then left the building without speaking about Ruud van Nistelrooy, Martin's big pal from many years ago. We joke, Martin. Actually, whenever his name is mentioned, you've always got a wry smile. I reckon you and Ruud would be good chums around a dinner table, would you not? Do you know what? I think he, uh, he's conducted himself very well, hasn't he, in the role that he's been in. I'd <laughs> like to have seen a bit more passion uh, when he was Ten Hag's assistant. I did actually say that at the time. It's not me just coming after him. Uh, but he's warm to the job, spoke, the, spoke very well, represented the club in the, in the right way. Uh, the next call now will be whether you keep that club man there or does he go on and um, fulfil that ambition of being a manager somewhere else? It's an interesting one for the club. Big decision to make. Just as you did all these years ago on the pitch at Old Trafford, you get into him quite early, didn't you? Uh, when he was uh, second fiddle to uh, Eric Ten Hag. Sometimes, though, you have you, you do mimic the, 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 the bench. You know, if the manager doesn't want anybody, historics, people jumping up and down, keeping silent when the players are in possession. So... You know, maybe that was the the towing the line. But um, if I was Arsene Wenger's assistant, which he said recently, um, he, he he regretted that he didn't give me that role. You, you try and hold me back, I would have been showing lots of emotion. Mm. Well, he's he's certainly done all right uh, in in his spell and interim charge. He's won three and drawn one of his four games. Why are you looking at me like that? That Come is on. factually correct. Come on. I mean, we're going to pay him, paint him as a club man. He couldn't get out of the door quick enough to go to Real Madrid. Look, the bottom line is he got an opportunity to step in in a bunch of games and Man United did precisely what they should have done. I mean, if you can't beat Leicester at Old Trafford, a weakened Leicester in a League Cup game, then I'm not sure what, who you can beat. Chelsea they, a decent result? Chelsea's a decent result, yeah, absolutely. But to turn it into some you know, super, super enhanced narrative of how well he's done, look, they've played against Pauk, who were, and they were poor against, but Palco were a poor side anyway. They got a result there, they beat Leicester twice. Nothing in this. If indeed Ruben Amarim is bringing in his entire backroom staff, which I understand was a big part of any discussions that he's had with other football clubs when he's running around photobombing them back in the <laughs> summer, then I don't see the space for Ruben Nistelrooy. Well, Amarim, we understand, we will talk to Van Nistelrooy about his Manchester United future when he flies into England today. Um, certainly from Ruud's point of view, it was put to him off the back, Simon, of his latest win as interim manager, would he miss being in the technical area? I think it's important to know your role. That's very important. And, and, and then things can work. And I think the first months here in my role as assistant, I did, I did my job, I knew my role, know how to support others. And in an interim, you have to take your responsibility. And, 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 and that's another reality, which I try to fulfill. And uh, bo both are, uh, are, are good jobs. So, I mean, as an owner, it wouldn't be the, the the stupidest thing to do to keep someone on who knows knows the football club. Uh, if, you're, success if your new there. manager wants him, if your new manager wants him and sees a place for him, and that role is in keeping with the role that he previously inhabited, which means that Ruben Amarim can't have his own assistant manager, can't have his own first team coach, or whichever role Ruud van Nistelrooy thinks that he has at Manchester United, if he has that. That's the end of the discussion. If he doesn't have that and is open-minded and thinks that ultimately having Ruud van Nistelrooy as part of his management team is a very meaningful thing to do, then he They have do. had a club man. And they've had Steve McLaren, haven't they, in the past? One or two that you'd have looked at and thought, OK, are these people that have know about the culture? So I think maybe they might do it. Well, you saw... I mean, what you saw on the weekend was the absolute embodiment of the culture of Man United and the problem they got in that dressing room where that kid doesn't celebrate that goal. And the reason why he doesn't celebrate Can that, natural. yeah, because the reason why he doesn't celebrate that goal is because he's had some hurty words said about him, or people have been critical of his performances. That is all you need to know. It's like the John F. Kennedy thing, isn't it? Don't ask what you can do for your country. Ask what you. So you're telling him how to behave. Don't ask what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Right. How I about? Think, how I think about, the important thing is you put the ball in the back of the net. Fans, but can actually look at those Man United fans and say, "We've served up a diet, a staple diet of crap now for 18 months, and you pay a lot of money to come and watch us." And we aren't delivering the outcomes that we should do. Mm. So rather than feel sorry for yourself or a sense of entitlement that the modern day footballer seems to you have. Can't which win, you can't win, can you? Donacho maybe is thinking it's been really disappointing. You know, fantastic goal. We ain't going to celebrate this. Why? We, we ought to be beating Leicester because I've come to this football club no, and no, expected no. much bigger expectations. But he didn't do it but for no reason. Have you, have you not read the well, reasons why well, he did Well, Fernandez has told us something else. Right. Yeah, the but reason, the player hasn't said anything. The, re the reasons. Well, okay, then, then Fernandez is a fool and shouldn't speak out of turn. So then. what if he goes running around the pitch, everyone says he's celebra over celebrating? No. 
But the the idea of you've just beat Leicester, the idea of a sense of entitlement, which is he feels that he has had a group of fans not being very happy with his performances. Oh dear, are we really now saying that players can be anaesthetized or immunized more to the point from any kind of criticism? Because if that's what you're saying, be careful what kind of leaders you're producing. Mm. Because these leaders will get you nowhere. Yeah. When yeah. you play for Manchester United, you should be able to embody the very culture of what, it, what it's like to be winning. And you celebrate goals, mm -hmm. not celebrate the, or, or, or don't celebrate it because somehow you feel maligned. This is the reasons why the culture of Man United is the way it is and he has hasn't been crumbled, for the last has 10 he? years. He's put the ball in the back of the net. So he should. He's paid yeah, enough money correct. to do that. I'm not, I don't know if I'd be completely happy with the, the, man, the, uh, the captain coming out and expressing that. Maybe this is a part of the new culture. Ganacho is going to be a part of the new Manchester United, the new group that come in and actually are pushing the bar but, but Mark, a little Mark, bit higher. It does seem fragile behaviour by Ganacho, does it not? Even though he's a kid. Fernando says Ganacho scored a banger, but didn't celebrate like he should because he thinks he's telling him he has to lost behave. faith from some of the fans. I told him people will always moan, but lots of people like you uh, and, and enjoy what you do. I told him to celebrate. So Fernandez is saying, "Look, it was a special moment. You should have celebrated it." Yeah, it's I agree not with wrong, that. I agree he? with that. But it's, it's, but it's just, like, I think it shows I've had a hell of a time I think of it, late. I no, feel it dreadful. Shows you what? I think it shows you how bad things are at Old Trafford. How toxic it's become playing at Old Trafford. You want everybody on board. You want that unity, and that's why this new manager is coming in. It's a self-indulgent load of old fanny. You've scored a goal playing for one of the best teams in English football and one of the biggest clubs in English football. And all you can do is walk around like Rashford, which is the world's on my shoulder. Poor old me. You know what? Mm, change so? the narrative. I think change it's a little bit, the way I think it's a little bit different. Think, everybody is saying the I don't think you can accuse Ganacho of not this, trying every, hard in, every, in games. Yeah. Everybody, what's, everybody, what's the narrative for Rashford? It looks as if he's uh, unhappy knows? with the club. He's not happy who with himself. Knows? He's not really tr who giving knows? everything. It looks like his body but language. We've, but we should be alive up. I don't see a shortage of energy with Ganacho. Show some gumption. You play for the biggest. Just doesn't want to celebrate. Maybe it's just what you need going forward. I don't want to celebrate. They've been on my back. He's not celebrating because he feels that they've been maligned, and that's wrong. Because it's about what you can do for your supporters and for the club you pay for, not the other way around. Well, maybe with the new not manager, the we're around. seeing him in the future we'll celebrating something. Now, worth before we go, would you like to wish Rude well? Uh, and of course, in whatever, he, decide, whatever he decides to if do. If he gets his gig. Yeah, of course. He, look, he's a proud man. He's come through the club, hasn't he? He knows the culture. He celebrates with the fans. And he started to show some of his personality. Yeah. Finally. Nicely, <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Martin Keown, Arsenal Invincible, thank you very much indeed. We'll find out in the fullness of time, as in probably in the next 24 hours, whether or not Rude will get his wish uh, to have some kind of role at Crystal, pa uh, at Crystal Palace. Palace. I looked at you and I thought Crystal Palace at Manchester United. Never well, I breaking it, news, that I will never know how you get away with some of the words you use in a descriptive fashion. But boy, do they resonate. Simon and I will be back at 10 tomorrow morning. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.